This is a Manitou Meza Pro suspension fork and it's going to be the start of a new bike build I'm about to get started on. Now this one's going to be really special to me because not only am I getting to build a bike with the latest tech on it and I'm really going to be taking this one quite far as well, but it's also going to nod back to the past to what I think is one of the coolest mountain bikes ever made that actually used to use the originals of these on the front and the back. Checking out and building a mountain bike from the ground up is one of the coolest things that any mountain biker can do and I really do urge anyone to try and do a project bike at some point. And that could be building a bike out of second hand parts you get at a car boot sale, it could be an entry level price point bike or it could be a bucket list super bike that you really aspire to do at some point down the line. Uh, but I promise you, you'll learn a lot while you do it, it's great fun and nothing beats the feeling of riding it once you've built it yourself. Now, I've already done a few bike build videos on the channel, they're going to be linked floating, floating around down there, but for this video, Manitou sent me a suspension fork and a shock, knowing full well how much I love their early day stuff. I actually did that weird gravel monster bike build using an early Manitou fork, talking a bit about that story, so that one is going to be floating around down there. And when Manitou gave me the fork and shock, they basically said, here you go, it's carte blanche, go and do what you want. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So this is the Manitou Meza Pro Suspension Fork. Now this one runs between 140 and 180 millimeters of travel. Uh, you can adjust that internally, which is very cool. So this is the Mara Pro. This is their top flight air shock here with a piggyback chamber on here and a whole range of external adjustment. Fully featured shock. This thing is gonna be sick. So about now, you're probably wondering what frame I'm gonna pick to plug these into. So this is my theory. When Manitou were massive in the early 90s, the frame that they used to be plugged into was the Manitou FS. Now this frame was famously piloted by Jürgen Benecke, uh, who was just unbelievably good on the World Cup scene, a mega influential racer as well in the early 90s. Now this frame had a set of Manitou forks on the front, but it also had another set on the rear. Now this thing was really cool, and the more you looked at it, the more sense it actually makes, because it reminds me a bit of a twin shock uh, motocross bike that you used to see back in the day as well. Uh, so again, look at it up close, it's just a work of art, the machining that's gone into it, and of course it was easy to make the rear shock because it was essentially just a modified version of the front fork. Absolutely beautiful approach. Anyhow, my theory here is that Manitou hail from the USA, and I've got the Manitou Fork, got the Manitou Shock. Jürgen Benecke, the best example of a Manitou rider of all time in my eyes, he hailed from Germany. So it's gonna have to be a German frame. Okay, now here it is, a YT Capra. So this one is a size double XL, 29 inch front and rear, full carbon construction, state of the art design. Now this thing, I think represents exactly what the Manitou did back in 1991. That was a state-of-the-art bike that could handle the roughest terrain imaginable, like Cap Die, the downhill with baby head-sized rocks and stuff on there. This thing eats that for breakfast on a daily basis. So this is the modern-day enduro bike. You can ride this up, down, over, along, anything you see fit. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing with this build. Before I put everything on the frame, there's something that's not quite right. It doesn't quite look how I imagine things looking. How about this? Okay, now that is starting to look a little bit more like where this project is going. Uh, so it's a nod to that Manitou downhill frame from the 90s there. Um, obviously this is with a brand new YT Capra frame. So on the chain stays, you will see it says Capra AM. Uh, obviously showing off it's Capra, it's an all mountain bike. Uh, I could have put EN for Enduro, but it didn't look right. We did try that with the graphics. On the uh, CGP, we've got a German flag with young talent, um, as opposed to having the American flag that was on the American made Manitou frame. Uh, we've gone for the Manitou style graphics on the seat stage there. as a bit of a nod to the fork that was on the back. Um, but honestly, you need to look at this up close to appreciate it. The finish is unbelievable. And this is about 35 hours worth of work from the amazing couple out fat creations. I honestly cannot say enough about what they do um, in terms of professionalism and love that they put into the frames. We've got a video all about custom painting where you're going to see this going from like a bare strip back frame uh, to the finished item and I even got to paint the front triangle as well. So that's dropping on GMBN Tech soon, look out for that one. Right, let's get trucking and get this thing built up.
Okay, we are done and uh, I've got to say, this is easily the coolest bike that I've put together since I've worked here at GMBN. Uh, in fact, ever, who am I talking about? This is amazing because if you know me, I like my modern tech, I like my retro tech, and this represents everything where I came from with the old stuff, but with the brand new modern tech. Uh, so a quick rundown on this before we hit the trails. So this is a YT Capra underneath here, 29 inch bike uh, running 170 mil travel front and rear comical if you think that the original that this is based on uh, had 26 inch wheels and 75 mil travel front and rear yet that was a downhill bike and this is uh, an all-mountain enduro bike crazy really so you've got the Mesa Pro fork on the front you've got the Mara Pro shock on the back there we've got pro taper bars and stem on the top here uh, that really represents exactly where Manitou came from because you used to have answer products as part of the whole Manitou group there and you would have had a taper light or hyper light bar perhaps before pro tapers turn up uh, of course had to have the pro taper on here uh, the pro taper stem reminds me of the early Manitou stem that was quite boxy now this stem is 50 mil and the Manitou stem would have been probably 120 maybe even longer than that. So you've got to think the bikes have changed dramatically. On this bike, you're talking a 64 and a half degree head angle uh, with near enough a 78 degree seat angle. So slack and steep. But on the old bike, it was opposite way around. So head angle would have been nearer 70 degrees, seat angle nearer 73 degrees. So dramatic difference there. And of course, 26 with the, the 29 thing. Now wheels, we've got Reynolds Black Label wheels on here. So carbon rims running on the Industry 9 Hydra hubs. Now, unlike a lot of carbon wheels, these ones are built for compliance, grip, uh, comfort, everything else right so if you look at spokes you've got bladed spokes on these as well and now the hydro hubs really are something special i've made a separate video on those by the way so if you want to learn about those it'll be floating around down there but they're one of the only hubs that doesn't try and fight flex if you think when you're hammering power down through a bike you know you think you're going to be a heavy person you're putting the power down there's going to be flex that's just part of what bikes do and as a result some hubs can be guilty of the basically disintegrating the bearings because of that so some hub manufacturers overbuild the hubs to cater for that which you get a nice stiff hub but then the bearings will go what they do on here they enable the flex to actually engage more pulls so the more power you put through it the stronger that engagement gets. It's just it's a brilliant system. Cranks, I've gone for five dev cranks on here because yeah, they are like the latest in technology, but actually they look really similar to all the old CNC style cranks we used to run in the 90s. I love it, it's the perfect modern retro. Tires on the bike, uh, jumping back to wheels again, gone for Hutchinson's. They're 2.5 Griffiths with a Racing Lab compound. So real nice soft compound, uh, decent enduro sidewalls on them. Um, and I've got to be shallow here, I did actually pick these because of the colour. I knew that they were great tyres anyway, I've ridden these before, but let's face it, the colour on these do resemble the early IRC tyres, so it's the perfect match for the build. Um, so, well happy with those. Uh, XCR drivetrain on there, nothing really to talk about there. XCR chain, cassette, rear derailleur, Manitou dropper post, SQ Labs seat on there. I used to love those back in the day, so great to have one on the front again there. And last thing to talk about, of course, are the brakes. Uh, running dot fluid in these ones. Uh, the Dominions, they've got Reynolds carbon brake levers on them, which is awesome. I love the fact they've got carbon on. Um, they've got a nice warm feel to them as well uh, over the metal levers. Four pot calipers, front and rear. And quite unusually, uh, this is what drew me to these. I've seen them a few times trade shows they've got a couple of unique features each caliper has two bleed ports on them so you get ultimate bleed on those uh, and also the caliper mounting bolts have got these tiny little grub screws for centralizing the caliper awesome i love it i think it's amazing right let's get out there and ride the thing and see how it is shall we <laughs> Jürgen Benneke was competing on his Manitou FS in the mid 90s. When I was watching thinking, man, that downhill bike must be like really hard to ride everywhere with that 75 mil of travel. Isn't it mad to think that today I'm riding uphill quite comfortably on a bike with 170 millimeters of travel. I think it's testament to bike design, suspension design, geometry, everything that's going on, but one must beg belief that a bike with so much more capability than we ever had in the 90s can do everything better. Up, down, along, over, everything in between. And I've got to love just this little detail here. The lockout switch on this Manitou shock says, 
work and party. Love that stuff. It's great. It's 21 years that I've basically been doing a job along these lines, working in the mountain bike industry. But I've been completely, utterly obsessed. Like, it's, it's a love affair, the whole mountain bike thing. Since I was about 10 years old and I was first introduced to the bikes. But I obviously used to aspire to ride, you know, the great bikes. And that Manitou FS was just, that was a poster bike for me. You know, in the magazines, you'd have double page spreads, the sort of stuff you'd cut out and put on your wall. And do you know what? I'm not sure I ever want to ride that bike. Like, this is properly, I've said the don't meet your hero thing, but actually, the more I think about it, like, I have no interest in riding old retro bikes. Just like to look at them and remember the nostalgia. That has just got everything going on. Like, the fork alone, there's more technology in that than in the entire Manitou FS bike. It's crazy. So, that's the Meza Pro fork, right? It's an air fork, but it's got a triple air spring in it. So, it's got a thing called infinite rate tune. You can tune the rate at which the fork sort of progresses through that travel. It's unbelievably plush and it's really smart as well so it's got 37 mil stanchions so obviously in other brands you'll get 36 and 38 that one will be about as stiff as a 38 mil because it's got the brace on the back of the fork there so it's lower down they can use more material and it's got a hex axle at the bottom so it's just really smart with the way they manufacture things i think that's quite reflective of how manitou was to start with the whole approach to having the twin shock design on the rear by putting a set of those efcs on the back of the bike Obviously, it's no comparison by today's standards. I love the journey of tech that I've seen in the lifetime that I've been working around bikes. Do you know what? Kind of quite unfairly, I've been talking about the suspension and the wheels and the tacky tires and all the cool stuff on a bike, but I've not really talked about the braking advancements between then and now. I, do you know what, it's, it's more than night and day, it's a completely different thing. Mountain bike brakes in the dry were okay, all right? In the wet, they were non-existent. Rides would often, you'd come across a part of the trail and it'd be like, do you reckon you can get down that? It was never like, how fast can you ride something? So with that in mind, when you look back at some of the old footage, like from Cap Dye, some of those early downhills, the racers I've been okay are going flat out, considering the bikes they were on. They had no brakes. It was unbelievable. And what you've got today, 200 mil rotors, you've got even bigger rotors available if you want them, all the way down to 160s, depending on what genre you're riding. Four piston, two piston brake choices, different brake pad compounds. You've got Sintage, you've got Organics. It's, it's just unbelievable. So, and I find it actually a bit funny that in the road world, they're still having these arguments about, you know, should they be using discs? It's like, well, of course you bloody should. It's common sense, isn't it? Disc brakes have changed mountain biking. So actually, I think there's probably three significant things that have really changed mountain biking for the better. Disc brakes, suspension, and the dropper post. I think those three innovations have dramatically changed what you can do on a bike. Yeah, okay. You could, buy, you, know, you could ride any old bike with none of that on and still have great fun. I'm not arguing that. But in terms of performance in off-road riding, it's just changed everything. I think I'm, the bubbles burst a little bit on the retro stuff for me. I'm just gonna leave it as a rose-tinted bit of nostalgia. You know, usually about now in these, these bike build videos, I sort of come to some sort of conclusion about how I feel about the bike, but in honesty, I, I don't really know what to say. I've had a wicked day riding, a great day riding a bike that looks like this. And it's totally, totally weirdly transported me back to when I first fell in love with mountain biking and I was too young and couldn't afford all of the cool high-end bikes. It didn't stop me loving bikes anymore. I just, it made me like desire them so much more. And I would never want to ride those bikes now. There's no need like to, to have this is just, it's just the best thing. Um, I should probably say thank you to a few people really. I mean, in particular, thank you to Manitou and YT for basically letting me deface 
your property to turn it into this. And an even bigger thank you really goes to Fat Creations. Ali and Bex, you're amazing. Watching you work, watching what you did with this is just absolutely mind blowing. Uh, there's gonna be a video that follows this one going out next weekend on GMBN Tech with everything about how custom painting is done. Uh, following me, have a go at some of this, but more importantly, following Fat Creations in how they transport a bike from a bare frame to a project like this. And it was, it was mind blowing. Honestly, it was like probably the coolest thing I've seen since I've been doing all the factory tours and everything, seeing talent like that operate. Um, thanks for watching. I'm not really going to say anything else. I, I've loved this bike. Um, I would love to know what you think of it. If you think it's cool, what you think I should build next, something like that, that would be cool. Uh, but other than that, I'm probably going to do a bit more riding. So let us know what you think down there. And don't forget to watch the painting video uh, next weekend on Tech. See you later.